Hey guys, Damon here at California Carnivores, and today we're going to talk about uh, what is one of the most popular uh, genera of carnivorous plants, but also infamously probably one of the trickiest to grow, and that is Darlingtonia. So there's only one species of Darlingtonia, Darlingtonia californica. It's native mostly to uh, California, but also southern Oregon. And you'd think it'd be easy enough to grow. We're here in California too, about four hours from where they grow. But they're a little bit tricky and here's why. So in the wild where they grow, they grow in big, usually out in the open with quite a bit of sun. And here in California, up in Northern California, it's not uncommon to have days that are 95, 100 degrees and it's a very dry heat, but we do get like at least that hot, maybe even hotter up there. Um, but their roots have to stay cool and that's because where they're growing out there in the sun, They've got uh, snow melt that's melting all year long and running underneath the soil and cooling their roots. And they've been doing that for millions of years. Darlingtonia have been endemic for this part of the world for millions of years. So because of that, they can be a little tricky to grow. Because how do you give something a lot of sun and not cook the roots, right? So there are ways and there are places where they're easier to grow. So um, if you're in San Francisco here in California, um, in that area, they're not gonna be that hard to grow because the fog comes in and you don't see too many hot summer days. If you're like in Alabama in the middle of the summertime, unfortunately, drawing Tonia are gonna be really tricky for you to grow. Over the years, people have come up with a lot of ways uh, to make that easier. The first way I would say is even though they do appreciate a lot of sun, they can get by with not that much. And so don't grow it in full sun. The color may not be so great on the tongues, we call them, but at least they'll stay alive. And even here in hot areas of California, I've seen large pots of Darlingtonia growing in like filtered light and they're still alive and they're clumps and they do just fine. They may not be the best Darlingtonia in town, but they do definitely live. So that's an idea. Um, we've seen people planting them in the white foam coolers, just using that as the pot. Um, and that keeps the roots cooler. Oversized potting is a good idea because a small pot is going to heat up quickly and a big pot is going to heat up um, slower. Uh, it's a good idea to put other plants or other vegetation around the sides of the pot so the sun isn't beating on that. Um, people will make distilled water ice cubes every single night. This truly devoted will make uh, ice cubes every single night and on the hot days you can put those on top of the soil and it slowly melts and cools the roots. We just saw another guy sent us an email where he's got um, double pots, where he has one terracotta pot um, full of rocks and water, and then the pot of Darlingtoni itself nestled in that, and that's cooling it down quite a bit. People will run little recirculating pumps. It is definitely a thing where you, you might have to be creative if you're gonna make this work in a hot space, but people do it, um, and there's a lot of other stuff online that you'll see on the forums. Uh, they still appreciate distilled water, but I will say that Darlingtoni often grow uh, with higher TDS in the wild. They grow into serpentine a lot of times, and so they can tolerate probably a few minerals, but it's gonna be a precious plant to use, so still use distilled water. They can be set in shallow water. Um, they even grow, I've seen them growing like out into the water of small lakes, and so they can be you know, practically aquatic, but the soil will break down really quickly if you keep it sopping, sopping wet. So sitting like a tall pot like this, sitting in shallow water is a really good idea. Fertilizing these guys is a good idea. The maxi fertilizer that we've recommended, you can do that through the roots. Um, and you can also put that in a little squirt gun and squirt it up into the opening in here. Cause if you get maxi fertilizer into these tubes actually, into these traps, that's really how the plant is made to take in its fertilizer. And so that helps a lot. Um, we've been selling Darlingtonia seeds as well. And so those are gonna need stratification. Stratification means cold and wet. So. You would sow those probably on the little pot and then put it inside a Ziploc bag with a little bit of water in the bottom so it stays moist and put it in the fridge for like four to six weeks, probably six weeks to be safe. The best time to do that if you're gonna grow them outside would be uh, in the early spring to late winter so that as it warms up in the spring, you can transition them out. Um, we do those on uh, the regular New Zealand um, sphagnum moss mix, maybe do a little milled or chopped up sphagnum on top so they don't fall down in the mix. But you could probably also do it on peat and perlite as long as you transplant, transplant them relatively soon. You can use the maxi fertilizer almost as soon as they germinate. And on small plants like that, it'll definitely speed up their growth. 
But it is a tricky thing. A little tiny Darlingtonia is gonna be even more sensitive than a big Darlingtonia like this one. This is like, you know, this is actually probably the biggest of the extra largest that we've sold, but um, some of the Darlingtonia we've been shipping out is about this size for $100. There's only a few of those left actually. Um, and while we're looking at Darlingtonia, this is a dentate form that lots of people don't even know exists, where it has a toothy tongue. I think we're practically the only ones in the world that grow this variety. But yeah, with the seedlings, after they stratify, they'll probably germinate after about four to six weeks after you take them out of the fridge. And they can be slow without fertilizing. The ones that we generally sell for like $25 at about two inches across, that usually takes us like at least three years, but usually more like five, honestly, to get them up to that size. Um, once they are of size, Darlingtonia will clump and spread with stolons, or what we call runners. And you can see this one sticking up out of the earth itself. And there's the runner that's still attached to the mother plant. But then this little new shoot will land somewhere and make its own roots, and they will remain connected. Uh, and the plant will um, feed the smaller plants. And so you could cut that off, but it's a good idea to let that get kind of bigger. And if you go and divide a Darlingtonia, don't cut off every single stolen trying to make a bunch of million babies because Darlingtonia are not like Saracenia that have a rhizome. They have these stolons and that's where all their energy is stored. And so even if there's other plants on the end, they're storing energy in those subterranean uh, rhizomes. So don't cut all those off when you divide it. We, we left ones on here so that it can feed the plant. Uh, another kind of cool thing is Darlingtonia will set up flowering for the next year. Um, that's probably gonna be a flower bud next year. And as far as cold hardiness goes, Darlingtonia grow up to about 7,500 feet on Mount Eddy. That's the uh, tallest population that I know of. And so they sit underneath snow um, for most of the year, probably it's gonna thaw around like June and come down again like around Halloween. And when the snow melts, the Darlingtonia are still green, they're just pressed flat from the snow. And so they're, if they're protected, um, mulch stand, they're party at least down to 15, maybe even a little bit colder. So they can definitely take the cold, it's the heat that gets them. And the summer, like I was talking about, just so you know, like it's usually, not a gradual decline. If you do get really warm in the roots, they can usually just die in a single day and they're not very forgiving in that. And that's why they're not for beginners. You know, if you wanna get into pitcher plants, grow a Saracenia, an American pitcher plant. Those are so much easier to grow. They can freeze solid down to 15, they can take it 115. And as long as they're sitting in the water, they're gonna be just fine. They're not like the Darlingtonia. Um, I think that's about all I have to say about them. If you guys ever have more questions, you can always check out our book, The Savage Garden, and we're on Facebook and Instagram and almost every other social media too. Thanks so much.